Welcome, everybody, to this new episode of the House of the Deaf podcast. We've got Raf Calantonio from Austin, Texas. Hi, Raf. Hi. And this time, our special guest is Alexei Savchenko, managing director of the new video game fund Magnifier One, also ex Epic Games business development manager and expert in legal aspects of game dev. So Damn. many things to discuss. Thanks for joining us, man. Hi. Uh, experts too loud, you know, like, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll. You are entering the house of the dead. Let's get to the point. Let's say that our imaginary game dev studio is looking for a partner. Actually, this is the, the stage towards uh, which my studio is slowly moving, but I think that it's already pretty obvious to everyone uh, who listens to this podcast that this show is a series of disguised consultations which i shamelessly use in my day-to-day -day work i'm kidding no i'm not so uh first of all let's talk about the options that uh, a studio has where do we go for money and what do we need to have to get that money a publisher a fund a non-profile financial partner i know there's a a lot to choose from, uh, what else, what obstacles can we face in different situations, pros and contras? Oh, well, ro robbing the bank is still the best option, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if, uh, it's, 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 the, it's the cheapest money <laughs> you can get, it's just joking, don't do that. Uh, but, but really, you know, like to start, to start answering this question, you gotta understand where you're at as a studio. You know, like it's, it's, it's basically, do you just got this idea, you know, like, and you started to do stuff, I mean, like, were you already have assembled the studio and registered and you have a vertical slice or not, you know, like, or there is a prototype. And I guess that the biggest question, you know, like everyone should be asking themselves uh, when they are uh, up to raise funds. I mean, like, is, is do, do, do they really need them at this point? And do they really need that amount that they're saying? You know, like it's because a lot of people, you know, like they're just following the word of the market, basically being kind of like, you know, like everyone raising money and raise money as well. I mean, like I need to do it as soon as possible. There is an opinion like that. Or I need to raise that amount because this other studio next door tried to do that, you know, like which is a completely wrong logic, right? Because uh, getting any money comes, well, I mean, like with, with it's just, it's not the charity, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. like it, it's, it's, Whatever you go, whatever type of organization you're trying to work with, you know, like you, it's an exchange, it's a business partnership, you know, like, and every money has its own cost. Uh, for, and ideally, you know, ideally, as a developer, if you are able to finish the project without raising any additional funds, just covering the full cycle of development, you should do that because you keep the full ownership, you know, like of everything that you do. Uh, for, and you will get the maximum margin you do not have to share success you know like and you you're like in a good position and there are some developers which are actually able to finish the game completely by themselves publish publish without advanced versus royalty from the publisher or investment money you know like and they keep the full rights to whatever they do right i mean the cases like this are quite simple you know like if someone left the big company you went out with some stock option or had money you know like you use your own money for the development you develop the game completely and you got to the point where you wanted to decide you know like if you go with a publisher but without an advanced versus royalty just using the publishing services or you self-publish and you use some marketing services, you know, like, and then you just have it, you know, like, if the game's successful, you reap the full success. I mean, like, you don't have to share with anyone. I mean, like, if game is not successful or moderately successful, then, you know, like, that's that's on you, basically, and you know that, and that's a good knowledge, you know, like, you know, the only person to blame is you, basically. So, I, I agree. Uh, I, I was here as well, back in the days when I was really struggling to find deals, because there was also this idea of, oh, wow, well, you know, if I can find a bank and they pay for everything, uh, then I don't need a publisher. Or actually, I can come to the publisher and I have the best deal ever because I pretty much do everything. I also heard uh, that some publishers don't really like that because they, you know, they, they, they basically want to also have a good deal. So they want to put their own skin in it. 
So you having them invest in your game can be also also to your advantage. It's not just for the, the deal terms because if if they're just gonna make ten percent of of the you know of the sales, it's like why would I do it? So there's a bit. It seems to be like the the, the you know the strategy of saying well I'm gonna do everything and I'm just gonna use a publisher as a service uh, seems to have its limits as well. If you see what I mean. Yeah, sure. No, I mean, like, it's, uh, and, and it, it kind of changed a little bit these days as well. You know, like, and it's completely fair to say, you know, like, that the publisher uh, need to have the minimal threshold of motivation in the project because otherwise they would just not participate. I mean, like, and currently at this point, like, market wise, I mean, like, it's considered to be 30%, you know, like, they would not take less. Of, uh, and the typical deals, if you are not taking money from the publishers, are in different circumstances. You know, like they are like from 70 to 30, 70 to the developer, 30 to the publisher, to 50 50, right? I mean, like, and if you take money, and if this is a larger project, and especially if this is some kind of a like a big risk AAA thing, I mean, like, then it's like super conservative still. You know, like you still stay at this 70 30 to publisher, 80 20, you know, like to, to publisher thing because like the, the risk is so big and you need so much of the expertise at the end. There is another factor as well from the publisher's end is that if your product, if your game is highly relatable and synergizes with the lineup that the publisher has at this point and the people who are playing the games of this specific publisher will play your game, like that's a big thing, you know, like you need to think about it because it can multiply your sales like many, many times. Uh, right. uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely the case. I mean, like, but uh, f uh, I also want to say, you know, like that now, especially like in the last two years, like situation kind of changes in the market because, like, what five years ago, I want to say, right? I mean, like, publishers had almost full monopoly, you know, like for money in the industry in general. I mean, like, if you needed to have money, you would go to to the publisher, and that it, or your uncle who's crazy enough to give you money because their family to love you, right? I mean, like, and uh, it changed now, you know, because industry is so hot and the market's so hot, you know, like there are a whole variety of the investors coming in, you know, like, and investments, money, they're just cheaper than the publisher's money, you know, like mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, yeah. like, so, That's right. so what, what, as a smart developer, what you can do, you know, like you can disassociate the advance versus royalty, which is effectively at this point just a very expensive loan, you know, like and services of the publisher, and try to find the happy medium, you know, like and complementary deal with the publisher, still preserving their motivation, but still having a good deal. Do you think there's a risk to repel some of the really, really good, powerful publishers that have like a true distribution power? I'm saying that because I think some some publishers will just not make a game if they don't have the IP. You know, they will want the IP. You know, they don't care about anything else because to them, the value of the of the game is really the long term IP. It's not so much about making a cut on a game, right? Yeah. I, well, I it, it, well because it's a long term asset, right? <laughs> Isn't it? You know, like that. That's what you want to keep as a studio because, like, if you don't own IP, you're not investable. Like, really, you know, like you become yeah. quite a shell type of company of work for higher thing, right? I mean, like, absolutely. If you give it away. Yeah. I mean, like, publisher needs to do that to increase the valuation at the market and to have, like, a long-term asset, basically. I mean, like, and uh, I think that studio should be trying to keep IP. You know, like, I also think that if there is a, a deal-breaker conversation from a very large, powerful publisher, you know, like, about the IP and basically getting the IP, I think it's a conversation but it never should be we want to have your IP and we want to get it for free or something you know like because that's always been the case in the industry I mean like and and IP is not just something you just give away I mean like if someone wants it you can sell it you know like and you can sell it sell it with incentives you know like or you can you can discuss IP as a collateral you know like whatever I mean like it can be a variety of different schemes but it's not the sure, case what, I, what I'm trying to say, you know, like it's like, and you know, what I think to be a, a changing uh, thing, Scott, right? What used to be very dishonest, I mean, like, is uh, for IP being taken basically for advanced versus royalty, you know, like, because like that's like advanced versus royalty is basically money a publisher puts into a developer to produce a, a, a merchandise they would distribute together as partners. 
you know, like, and, and basically it's an investment on the publisher side, you know, like, and why IP should be owned completely by the publisher. I mean, like, I don't really have an answer for it. You know, like it seems, seems to be very, very weird. Yeah. And I think, I think those conversations with publishers are a little more balanced when, uh, it's a reputable developer that speaks to a publisher. Uh, I think in, in the case of the new developers that, you know, they're young, they really hope to get the game signed. It's the most important thing to them. And, yeah. you know, if, if they got like a $5 million for it, it's fantastic. And it's very, they don't have much leverage uh, against uh, publishers who are ruthless. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen many, many deals. And uh, that for them, they just like, they just arrive with the assumption that the IP is not even a conversation. You know, that that's that's true you know, in, in our world of, of we, we live in. The publishers will, will come with those expectations. And uh, what would you advise to a starting developer to have even... A, so do they need to compromise and, you know, well, it's no, my I, first honestly, deal, let's just take my uh, IP, you know? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, like, it's... Uh, I, w I wanted to actually answer from a completely different angle here. I mean, like, because uh, I'm like with 23 years to the industry at this point you know like it's a, I, I actually started at the production side as a developer who's been to the situations as well right and what i think i learned over time i mean like is that if you are a new developer at the market you know like and if you're a game which is attractive and it looks good you know like and people like it i wouldn't actually go for a partnership with a big publisher you know, because like being a small company and communicating with a big publisher, it's in most of the cases a recipe for a failure. I mean, like I you're agree. not you're not ready for this structurally. You're not ready from this from the point of view of communication. You know, like you just you, you get you just get cluster blocked. You know, <laughs> let's put it this ah, way. Right, yeah. yeah, you know, like because like because like your operation is just not ready to communicate there, and that's typically this publisher who are asking for an IP. And I think that currently narrative is also changing. You know, like because of a lot of acquisition at the market. Instead of trying to go for an IP, I think that the big entities, what they're trying to do, both publisher and investment companies, they're trying to basically say that, look, let's work together, you know, like we'll publish your game if it's successful, we want to have an optional provision to potentially put an offer as a first hand, you know, for us to acquire your studio. You know, like not the AP, but your studio altogether, right? And mm -hmm. if this is acceptable, I think it kind of makes sense. I mean, like there are there are some underwater stones here, right? I mean, like and and in, in if if you are a founder, you really need to understand, you know, like that you really want to sell the studio and go with the studio for a big structure, because all of the talks about you will stay independent internally. Those are talks we all know that, right? I mean, like you can you cannot not get integrated, you know, like yeah. it's just not how it works. I mean, like, and well, gradually to some extent, but you will. But I still, it's 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 still potentially better because the developer stays with something, you know, like because if it, it gets bought, basically it's an exit, right? And it's just resources to go out and build something else. Uh, in some of the circumstances, you know, like if there is a long-term relationships conversation, right, and the publisher basically says that, look, we really like your IP. And developer is like, oh, that's great because I'm planning to build more than one game into that, you know, like, or maybe I will scare it horizontally, you know, like, or maybe we would do some TV series and stuff, you know, like and cross media elements to it, you know, like, and uh, if, uh, if this is a long term intention from the publisher, I mean, like, then there could be a conversation about like partial ownership or investment or some incentives or some cases where it unpacks over time, you know, like, and the deal can be structured in a variety of ways. The problem is, is that where this conversation is straight up, we'll give you money to develop the game and additionally we'll take your IP. Like that's, right. that should go, that shit should go away, you know, I because agree. that's yeah. like extortion, you know, it's, it's basically, it's a blackmail <laughs> yeah. and extortion. It's uh, especially, yeah. you know, like in some of the publishing conversations, it goes in a way, you know, like where the publisher deliberately filibuster the developer to the point where it gets to an extent where it cannot get to pay their bills. Basically put them on the point right. to play the leverage totally. on it, you know, yeah. like, and basically just blackmail by this payment to take on the IP, you know, like, and mm -hmm. that's, it's just a bad practice scenario, you know, like, yeah. it's just, just, everyone should avoid it. Unfortunately, very common. I mean, at least in the past, you know, I, I don't know now, like, maybe people are a little more, uh, uh, you know, as you said, like the market is a little more, there's a little more options now. So I guess some, some of the, you know, some of those old practices are probably evolving a little bit. Well, um, I have a question actually. What would you, 
So we, you know, we've talked about IP and like this other terms we can think of, right? Mm-hmm. Like royalties, uh, advances, uh, profit sharing instead of royalties, or like you know, the, what are the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what is recoupable, what is not recoupable. What, what would you say between all of these, including the IP? What are the the the, the you know four or five things that uh, uh, developers should really really uh, pay attention to and and in you know uh, and get, yeah, sure. get good terms for. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, read the contract because, like, because you gotta read the contract, you know. Like, and there is a lot of things which which looks innocent, you know. Like, and see, I mean, like, I always I've been to this position, you know, like where you start reading the contract, you, you obviously know how they structured, right? I mean, like, it also goes, you know, like with all of the terms and conditions, and then you know, like there is the essence of the contract based on the parameters, you know, like that the license for this specific product goes for five years for distribution for this amount of money, recoupable, not recoupable, you know, like, and then you kind of like. Almost all people I know who started to work in this industry, they look at this first part and it really, really flashes their eyes, you know, like, and then they do not read carefully, you know, like everything that goes after. And you really should, you know, like, because there's a lot of things that could be problematic. Like one of the things I would, I would really, really, really like developers to pay attention to is how specifically marketing commitment works. You know, like at the publisher mm. end, and how 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 the 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 expenses are deducted. You know, like expenses on the marketing are deducted specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- uh, there are dozens of shenanigans that could be done around this. You know, like to the benefit of the publisher in a bad contract. You know, like and some of them being commitment, not being actual commitment. Some of them saying that we will provide five hundred thousand dollars commitment to launch your indie game to the market and then there would be stipulations saying that all of the internal extent expenses are actually goes against this five hundred thousand dollars and then there is some creative accounting you know starts right i mean like and all of a sudden at the end of the day you figure out that that the ceo's daughter waiting being a part of your marketing budget you know like because apparently a lot of important people been there you know yeah. like and you cannot really do anything about it right i mean like like that that happens you know like not to that extent but that happens like another part of the marketing commitment is you know like then that, that it should be it should be completely performed to an extent is promised to be to be performed because a lot of publishers especially publishers that provide services to multiple projects at the same time like 50 a year, right? 100 a year. You know, like, we'll know what happens. Your product gets, you know, like, to, to the lunch, and then they're a first week, and if it doesn't correspond to some external KPIs of the publisher, they should just shut, just shut down the marketing. You know, like, and, and it's it's basically can be the part of the contract as well. I mean, like, you got to read very carefully. So everything related to marketing, you know, like, you need to check it out. I mean, like, because that's, like, important part. Uh, obviously part about recoupable, non-recoupable stuff, you know, like, because it's not a secret as well. And a lot of developers, you know, like, they do not still understand the difference between gross and net, you know, like, recoupable, non-recoupable, very basic terms, which basically define your financial health as a studio and as an individual and as a project, you know, like, like, at the end of the day. So, recoupable basically means that, you know, you know, as we know, that the money that have been paid to you need to be covered first from the sales, then you start getting paid, you know, like, and that leads to another part of a contract. And another thing that all of the experienced developers discuss, actually, you know, like, especially if you're deadlocked with one project, with one publisher, and this is the whole studio, you know, like, is, and this is as well in contract, and you need to check it out, you know, like, the money that will be paid after you recoup will happen down the road somewhere and for all of this period of time you'll need to pay your bills like a lot of experienced developers would go to the publisher and say this is the situation we need to have a special provision basically saying that your expenses would be recouped up to 60%. We need to still get the 40 until it full recoup because we need to sustain the development on those DLCs, you know, like all that jazz, right? I mean, like they basically try to solve the situation somehow. There is another element to it, and it goes, uh, even if you do advanced versus royalty, you know, like it's just financial logistics, right? And a lot of developers don't get it, like especially developers which are not from the US, 
because like in the United States and in England, developers, and that's a well-known fact, it's just from your basically young years, you know, like you're more financially educated because you do taxes and stuff, you know, it's it just, you, you've been taught things. I mean, like, it's not very symmetrical in the world. And a lot of people just, they don't realize, you know, like that when the quarter ends and you have to be paid, it's not going to be the next day. I mean, mm -hmm. like it's a net 30, net 60, net, net 90, you know, yeah. like in the most of the cases. Which basically yeah, means, months, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. which basically means that you would be paid in three months after three months ends, plus yeah. time associated with all of the money being transferred, you know, like and all of the movement, you know, like, and such, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. if you are in Russia as well, I mean, like God bless you, I mean, like and help you at the same time because like you can get to the currency control into the Russian banks, right? I mean, like and if you do not get into the right timing, you know, like your money just will get frozen. You know, like like you need to understand how money moves in the world, or and how your agreement, how your contract basically regulates this movement, because otherwise you just you're in a world of trouble. Like that's super important. Yeah, uh, you need to figure out how the contract contract regulates, and you need to pay attention how the contract regulates you further work under this IP because we've been talking <laughs> just now about ownership of the IP. Well, outside of that, I know at least five ways how to make sure how I would have the first vote on deciding if you make the next game, what game you make under this IP without owning this IP just based on the first agreement. You know, like it basically can be we signed this first game if it reaches this KPIs, right? I mean, like, and while IP stays with the developers, there is a right to first refusal being associated under this first initial agreement by the publisher, right? You know, like, to countermatch or bid, you know, like, any second game goes that goes after this deal. You know, like, there are rights of not ownership, but basically kind of a corporate rights, you know, almost, right? Associated, you know, like, with this first initial touch with this partner i mean like and you need to figure out you know like if it's there because yeah. for example if we're talking about the ip development and as we know as a fact you know like there is this innocent fact no one notices you know like where publisher just says you know like but we also have all of the rights for the merchandise totally yeah yeah how, so there are many so? traps right yeah and, right and, and how so <laughs> Yeah, because it's well, yeah, of course, because they know way more than most most developers. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 prepare. They have like the you know. So w would you because of all these traps? Uh, would you would you think a, a, a developer? And again, I think we're mostly thinking in context of a starting developer, right? Do, yeah. do you think they they are armed to deal with that themselves, or should they be? helped with like for example agents or some other uh, type uh, of uh, business partners yeah uh agent 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 is a good thing to have i mean like and that's not a symmetrical thing to have as well because like it's a very american thing you know it's a very british thing because traditionally not just the video games but entertainment you know like being built in a way uh that that you get things done by solicitation isn't it right i mean like and therefore you have agents and they safeguard to gateways, you know like to the publishing houses and such and the work you know like is a universal uh medium you know like between the publisher and the developer and people would think because all of us watch hollywood movies right i mean like that the agent is someone who just sits in an office you know like and represents you basically trying to find you cool people to work with but actually, agent does much more than that. You know, like, let's put it this way. You know, like, if you're working with a good agent, it's almost like working with a union, you know, like individual or like just, you know, like a part of the larger agency because no one screws with agencies. You know, they know everyone, you know, like they have legal ins and outs, you know, like, and basically they help, help you with all of the legal documentation. I mean, like, that's your legal insurance in a sense. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the good agent as well. You know, like someone who who would never charge you any form of retainers. You know, if agent likes your work, I mean, like all of the agent works goes on top. You know, it, it, they just charge basically. If you're making a game and you want to find million in resources, like an agent won't take like 5% up or 10% whatever. You know, like you're discussed with an agent. That means that you're still getting your million. You're not sharing with this dude. You know, like it's just his 100 is on top on that, right? I mean, like, so uh, f uh, it's in general good thing. I think that the agents are good things for the developers, you know, like especially good agents, right? Do I mean, you like think uh, some, some publishers are 
uh, repelled or when, if you bring an agent? Like, is it would it be a smart thing in some cases to work with the agent more like in the background than in the foreground? Well, I think that the it's it's not just in general publisher repel, you know, like well, but it's it's in general, you know, if somebody practices malicious practices, sorry, sick, right? I mean, like if you show up by yourself, those people are happy. If you show up with the lawyer, they're not. You know, you know, it, it's it, it's like it's no one likes you to be informed, right? I mean, like because they can tell <laughs> right. you everything, you know, like and then you can buy this bullshit. I mean, like, but if you have any level of support, I mean, like, then it it works better for the developer. I mean, and that's 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 the thing. I think that I think that in some cases you obviously you're right. You know, like in some cases, publisher managers and scouts and specifically people on the ground. You know, like when they start talking with the developer, and they kind of do this couple of drinks shenanigans show floor initial yada yada impressions you know like in the thing and they're like yeah let's do that and developer is super hyped and super pumped and like definitely let's do that at least someone who likes my game type of stuff right yeah i mean like and then yeah <laughs> and then conversation moves up and moves forward and when developer shows up with some level of legal support and agents all illegal this guy kind of starts freaking out and play this game of being kind of like, well, I thought we're all friends here, you know, type of shit. <laughs> well, buddy, that's yeah. business, you know, like it's been great hanging out, you know, like, but now we're discussing illegal stuff. Yeah, you know, well, and so. also the people that you met, they're not the business people. Yeah. They're well, the friends, yeah. actually. They're truly other friends. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are totally, there are, there are, it, it, corporate structure is a completely different discussion, you know, like in people you yeah. meet at the shows, people you meet at the negotiations, and people that yep. make decisions through very different kind of people, you know, like, and, totally. and, and yeah, they yeah. think very differently, you know, like as well. And uh, it's, not, it's not a secret as well. I mean, like, that in a lot of large corporations, you know, like there is a informal separation, you know, like between the people on the front end and the back end and people on the front end to not do unpopular things and people on the back end do unpopular things, right? Because like this right. just works better. So, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a game, you know, but it, it, it you, you just gotta know that, you know, like, and over years in industry, you start knowing those things, you know, like, and it kind of starts really helping you. Now loading the house of the dead. Can we try to be a little bit more specific now? Um, I mean, there's this game called Stygian Reign of the Old Ones. Maybe mm -hmm. you you heard yeah, about it. Maybe Lovecraftian thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an RPG based on the novels of Howard Lovecraft. It's a brilliant game, and everything about it is just so good. It it made me want to cry sometimes. Pure miracle. I would happily consider it the best Lovecraft-based game ever, but after like it's not 20 hours... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but after like 20 hours or so, it just suddenly stops and rolls a cutscene and then just rolls the credits. I was like, what, what the shit, guys? Uh, and I was curious about what happened to this game. And recently it turned out that I personally know the guy who forced the devs to interrupt this game like this. I know there's, uh, this is not entirely the publisher's fault, of course not. And I know there's always deadlines and there's arrangements and budgets and risk, but there's this very situation illustrates that you must protect yourself from surprises like this. Uh, like maybe have an option to change the publisher find money somewhere mm -hmm. else if you realize that the delay is unavoidable and uh, most of the time it is uh, and the publisher can just go like give me the gold disc or die are there any options and uh, Raf, i think that you can comment on this too once you arrive at a level of conflict with the publisher uh of that kind of conflict i i that's my belief that there's not many you might have all the clauses that you want and all the all the mechanics in the contract. It's still not in a good situation to be in, uh, and you can't really force someone to do something. I mean, like there are payments and audits and all that. That's sure, but mm -hmm. like the, when it comes to oh, the game is not good enough or this or like you know, wow, well, we need to add more money because of that. Then I think 
you know, when it, when it goes to like the direction of the game and both don't have, don't can see each other eye to eye, it, it's, you're you're just fucked, frankly. Yeah. And I, yeah. I don't know that contract can really help. Yeah, on my end, I mean, like it's. Uh, for, I would say that that one of the things which it's an interesting thing because it's a cultural thing, you know. Like, and the cultural thing goes when you go into a relationship and everyone considers everyone to be nice people you should not presume that you would end it in conflict and the thing is you should you know like that's in business you know like it's just a very normal thing to have and because of this prejudice people would typically look at the contract you know like and they would see how contract ends right and they would just oh just never happen that would never happen with these amazing people i just met these people are my friends i'm a bad person to even think about it you know i would not read that shit right i mean like but you have to you know like and you have to understand what survives even when the contract is is bridged you know the contract's closed because here is a thing when you terminate the contract legally some of the things have the survival clauses right i mean like they would still stay like and you would live with that for like many many years and you need to read that it's bad to be that locked it's good at least at least you have an option to have your contract being purchased by some other third party who wants to keep on and to continue and you to have an ability to search for such a party you know like and that partially can maybe remedy things i mean like though when it goes goes down to the to the game specifically you know like i i would agree with rob you know like it's if conflict happens and if this complex, if this conflict is not immediately remedied, and stuff starts to get very sour, I think it just it would it would not end well. I mean, like, and I think that the best strategy here is just to end it as soon as possible. I mean, like, not to drag it, you know, like, and basically to to just bridge it. I mean, though, I, I should say I know some of the cases where a developer basically been able to remedy the bad contract, you know, like, and to uh, find a third party who would buy out the contract, buy out the liabilities, relaunch the process, finish the game, launch it, you know, like, to, to be fine, basically. Yeah, this is a lot of hoops and stress, though, but yes. Yeah, that's possible. It's not a simple way, you know, but it's possible, so. Yeah. And, uh, we, uh, so, and it so, should be a really phenomenal game to, to have a chance like this. If uh, I it, it, should, right. it should be it should be a good game. You know, like here's mm-hmm. the thing about the games and publishers and people who who provide judgments for any entertainment products as well. You know, like there are in general not that much games that could be qualified as infinitely good or infinitely bad. You know, like there are games that are fitting for the publishers and, and the audience and games that are not fitting. You know, like to the context. I mean, like, and that's what I'm always trying to say. People who are asking me from the developers' world who are getting rejected by the publishers. I mean, like, I'm basically saying that you're not getting no's because your game is bad. You're getting no's because your game probably doesn't fit their pipeline. You know, like, or you're getting no's because your game probably don't fit the budget. Don't be fact. In, don't pitch this point in November. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. like November is a budget month. You know, like you cannot do a <laughs> shit this month, right? I mean, to, like, to that and, point, what do you think are the qualities that a publisher is uh, interested in in a developer? Because I think it's you know we all know how oh, well the game has got to be good, but are there other things you think that really matter in a in a publisher's interest? Uh, that's a good question because like I think the publisher is mostly interested in the project, not the developer. I mean, like, and I think that any investment company and investment investment capacity of the market and more interested into the company and the founders in the first place because they are the point of investment relationships you know like mm-hmm. and then the, the publisher generally interested in the game and all of the factor factors which are risk factors around the game so basically when publisher asks to enumerate all the key people from the team into the contract who are responsible to the development of that game they're just trying to de-risk the situation you know like when an investment company asks you about that they want to assure that you have all the key people as a founder to perform up to a strategy which basically means that the company would be growing and providing more value you know like so it's a two very different approaches i think that the publishers as well are potentially interested in in a long-term success i mean like not just in games everywhere you know like it's like the book publishers right i mean like if if they want to if they are considering spending large marketing budget at your first book 
they want to make sure you're able to write at least three. You know, <laughs> like because you know, this yeah. is how it rolls. I mean, and uh, f- uh, yeah, no. I mean, like, I think I think that uh, f- on a on, on a humorous note, I mean, like, both publishers and then the founders just want to be at least relatively sure you're not getting crazy, you know, like anytime soon, because that's happen often, you know, like in the gaming industry, you know. But uh, f- uh, but. But in general, you know, like it's 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 this separation. It's a publisher looks at the at the, at the game as a product, you know, like more than than to as a company. But if the products are not to be very good, then because market changed, publish publisher also changes the heads from the publisher to the investor and start thinking about including this company internally into the the ecosystem, you know, like of the company they're building. Yeah, part of the problem is that we make games over two three four years and yep. so you, you you know you're getting into a wedding with with a partner that depending on the publisher there might be some turn turnover and it's it's a different person now I mean, it's like all this is also like adding to the to the, to the stress of the relationship well but that that's a that's a two-side lane isn't it yeah totally. you know like it's i know a lot of instances and actually one of my cases is is that a, a publisher which is considered to be more of a business and the stable structure would get into the situation where they would get, you know, like a lot of, based on one game, publisher took a lot of money. It's been old days, right? I mean, like a lot of money from the buyers, from the from the shops, you know, like, and they would misuse this money basically to start five or six other projects. And in a year and a half, they basically went almost bankrupt. So who's yeah. risking now? You know, like the developer <laughs> yeah, right. who, who haven't got paid. You know, like at the end of the day, and uh, yeah. f- um, it, it, it's 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 just it's um, it's basically you know like when someone trying to say you know you that in this kind of relationships you're trying to the business too that they that they have more risks with you and you should be appreciating and be happy being at this place. To my judgment, that's already a level of manipulation. You know, like, totally. because like yeah. partnership, partnership is in this business can be only equal. I mean, like, and for me, once again, personally, you know, like the most alluring example is actually the way things been happening in music industry, 70s, 80s, you know, like where creative talent been basically at the pedestal, you know, like and a good producer would mean that you just go with those guys, you know, like who are creative talents and you would not <clears throat> tell them what to do but you would try to create the context what they would just create more effectively. You know, like whatever it means, right? If they want to get on a boat, you get them in a boat. You know, like can you help them just to get into this mood, right? I mean, like, because that's that's your source of magic. Because the whole game industry is an intimate relationship between the developers and the gamers. Everyone else can disappear, this will stay, right? I mean, like everyone else are helping. You know, mm-hmm. like to to the level that they can help. You know, like but no one else should not interrupt into this process. And we we also know, you know, like that developer is risking a lot. Like it's it's their business. You know, like if they do not deliver what gamers want, you know, like they it's always their fault. That's yeah. done. It's their fault. They're done. You know, like the. The publisher works in a way, or like even investors work in a way, you know, like though I think that the investment relationships are more honest because like it's not the lottery without the downside. People actually invest into company and participate at the developer's end, right? I mean, like they're a part of this company. It's their interest. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> like a minute of a shameless self-promotion, you know, like to our activities, but whatever, you know, like, but, but when it comes down to the publisher, I see the problem is is not specifically of publishers companies be somehow evil they're not they are not you know like they actually are trying to do a good business you know like where they are investing money and attracting money to help developers to multiply the success of the games by getting them through to the market but the problem with the publisher is is that it's structured in a way where there might be people who genuinely want to help you know like developers and they're could be people at the positions of junior producers, let's say, who would be handled the project, and their only risk is a sixty thousand pounds annual salary. You know, like, but they would still try to go and impose the full weight of their ego on the developer, so trying true. to say to yeah. say them how to develop stuff. You know, this like, is and so that's, true. that's the problem. Yeah. 
this is so true and and uh uh, what do you do for that? You know, because it's it, it's. Uh, it, I'm not saying it happens with every publishers, but it happens with a lot of huge publishers because yeah. they have so many games, they have so many people. They, things start to get out of hands, and they uh, they would put someone that is not the best, and uh, and then that person, if you're unlucky as a developer, you know, it's got like it's. It, they see that it's now their time to finally shine, and they will wreck your game. Uh, yeah because of the power that they have it's like you know suddenly you have this like 10 levels down junior that has a power be beyond the ceo of the developer right it's, it's yeah. a situation that happens uh what, what can you do well but it's also i mean like to to understand the problem here i mean you need to understand like a little bit of a structure right i mean like because that typically goes from the junior stuff you know like or the middle management stuff right i mean like that typically never goes from the people who are a little bit senior because like the lower down the corporate structure, the more the people at the lower levels think that their job is to somehow build a career that's A, B, protect the bottom line of the company in some way. You know, like the more it goes up, the more people get strategic, actually, you know, like, and they actually start thinking about the long term relationships and stuff, you know, like, and all these things, but isn't it? You know, like, so if you can escalate your issue, you know, like, up the ladder in the company, Especially those times, you know, like where, how should I put it, you know, like it's a, uh, if, 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 if you get heavily mistreated, like heavily mistreated as the developer, but as the genius person, if you can expose these facts, walkouts happen for less, you know, I mean, like now it's this time, you know, like where, where you, you can basically go and say, very honestly, you know, like that, that I've been super heavily mistreated by your employee, you know, like we get this emails at night containing disrespectful ways you know like in an attempt to blackmail and like basically go hard at us you know like and those are the facts yada 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 do something about it you can at least that you can get you can get person replaced you know like and there are multiple places where you can achieve the result of person being replaced i mean like in most of the cases that means that the person probably not getting fired you just get somewhere else you know like but but at the end of the day you might get a better option i mean like and while a lot of people would be intimidated by the fact that that people would start to think that you're hard to work with in reality it often ends up with the people actually realizing that you're a person you shouldn't be fucked with you know like <laughs> and then you know like in other circumstances you just do great stuff you know like you're right you're fine I mean, like, and another thing, you know, like, it's if that's getting pathological, you know, like, and you just understand you got yourself into bad circumstances, you know, like, I actually think, you know, like, if it happens one, two, three times, you know, like, and you just, just woof, right? I mean, like, you, you should think about bridging relationships. I, it, it's just the way it goes, you know, like, like, it's if you cannot remedy this, you know, like, over like three, four attempts, it means it just will continue. It will poison your life, it will poison your project, you know, like, and you will get into the situation. Uh, where you just drag it to the point where breaking this relationship would be even harder if you would do it from the start. Like, and and I understand that it might sound like, um, oh, it's easy to say for you. No, but I've been to the situations. I mean, like, I literally been to the situation where I got into the developer-publisher relationships where I've been informed by the publisher, like, at the verge of the new year that they are terminating the contract and they're not planning to pay, owning us three milestones. And I had to get to get the team together and basically lay off, you know, like 70 people in three days. I mean, like yeah. it's been a fucking nightmare, right? I mean, oh, yeah, like, it, can, but... it can get ugly for sure. I, I guess we agree that the, the percentage of games that eventually come out versus, you know, like if you, if you looked at all the games that get started, hoped for meeting publishers, beginning of contract, and then the game that come out successful. There's so many things that can happen to a game, like so mm -hmm. many things that can slash the game in many, many, many parts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I assume younger developers that try to get into the business, they they you know, it, you you want them to have some sort of level of naivety so that they, they get in and they you know they believe in what they're doing. But it's it's gonna they also get have to be prepared for it's gonna be hard. Yeah, no, I'm, well, I mean, that's, but that's, that's not just games, you know, it, it's, it's like the whole, whole of the business of entertainment, you know, yeah. like, like, it, it, it's mm -hmm. just like this, like movies and the music and the books, it's all the same. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, maybe everything. As, yeah. 
As, as Warren Spector said in the first episode of this podcast, if I could scare you away with with this, this job was never for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have. yeah well, yeah, I mean, they also say it about the multiverse. If you are not freak out to your shit about the multiverse, about the metaverse, it, it, it means that, that we're not doing it properly. <laughs> Which I think <laughs> is a good saying, you know, like... Uh, f- uh, but, but yeah, another thing, I mean, like, to add here, right? I mean, like, is... I think that, and I'm not just saying about the funds, you know, like, or investments, I'm talking about the partnership, because if you would think back into the 70s, most of the most of the most powerful business duos in the industry being done in the situation where a very cool hardcore developer would meet somebody from business, you know, like, and they would collaborate together, start building the company, and they would be diversifying their expertise and efforts you know like and they would be stronger in any communication you know like and they would be able to do these different things right i mean like if you are able to uh hook up with a cool investor who believes in you i mean like and who provides you the capital for the growth and who also provides you assistance from administrative legal support and all this stuff i mean like you literally have someone who would help you in many many instances right i mean like in 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 other relationships and the fact that you are prepared and you have allies and friends and knowledge doesn't mean that you're harder to work with. It just means that people will realize this fact and they will restrain themselves from trying to use any type of practices which are not fitting this context. They would just take you more seriously. You know, like, and this is something you should be looking for. I mean, it's just it's as simple as that. Uh, f- uh, and like going against the juggernaut of the industry by yourself is hard like but there is one instance which is much more harder than that because like if you go alone you kind of like it's it's almost like this david versus goliath type of thing right i mean like and you are like like yeah let's do that i mean i'm crazy enough for it and there is a lot of cases for solo developers which just be cool and crazy enough to go and and do that right i mean like but the the it, it's harder for people who take the leadership role with 5, 10, 15 other people who they feel responsible for and they do not obtain enough access or level of the expertise and they're putting themselves in a position where at every negotiation it's not just them, it's also their level of promise and responsibility for those other people who believe in them and it's a shitty place to be you know, like it's it's a hard, it's a very hard place to be I mean, like, and if you if you are doing this, if you are leading the team, if you're trying to build something, you know, like, you need to think about getting yourself allies, you know, like, for conversations, contacts, you know, be, be able to protect your own interests and just people's interests. So that's right. just how it rolls. Makes sense. What what a dramatic, you know, what a dramatic thesis. <laughs> I, I some I, I sometimes do that, you know. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I think I think trauma is great. I mean, like I mean, a lot of people, you know, like and in business especially, well, it's they're, very they're true. Like, it's very true. Drama, though, drama, just... drama is horrible. I'm, uh, drama is awesome. I mean, like drama, is what makes us people, you know, like and like traumatizing situations, you know, like it's giving spice to life. It's just making things beautiful. I think it's it's great. Alexei, thank you very much. This thank you was, much, guys. you know, thank th- you this was questions. fast thank but you. fascinating. Very, <laughs> you know, <laughs> very nice and quick, useful. Quick and deadly. You know. Quick and <laughs> deadly, as always. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, and uh, you both guys have a nice weekend. Yeah, thank guys. You. Thank you, guys. You too. Great See conversation. You See you, guys. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.